Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. I have a cold right now, so I apologize for all the sniffling I will be doing throughout this video. Anyway, I went to a bead show, and I bought from two sellers. The first seller I bought from had some gorgeous Czech sea beads, and I was going to show you them in this video, but I already busted into them. The second seller I bought from had some very beautiful beads, and a huge selection to choose from. I've been on the hunt for opaque colors in different shapes and uh, this is what I found there. All the rondelles I got were on sale at the time and so were these turtle beads. I'm just going to dump it out so you can see them. These here I think are 8 millimeter rondelles. It's a gorgeous color and this rondelle is solid all the way through the bead. It is not coated like some beads are at the, you know, like, uh, craft stores have. Sometimes when you go to a craft store, you'll have beads like this that are gorgeous, and then, uh, when you look at the hole, you can see that the bead is coated, so the coating will come off eventually. Here's another one. This one is a, like a green turquoise color, I would say. And this one is a 6mm rondelle. This one here is a light blue same size, 6 millimeter, and they're nice long strands, <laughs> and this one here is a pink rondelle, this one's a 6 millimeter also, and this one is an 8 millimeter, and it's a nice green color, I love greens like this, and then those are my rondelles, and I got from that same tub, because all of these here were on sale, I got these turtle beads. And there is a ton on the strand. A lot. Um, I was going to buy these one time from Michael's. And the strand at Michael's, I think it was like this big. It was pretty short. But I didn't do it. So um, later on, I went to the bead show and I found a huge strand. And it was cheaper than at Michael's. Um, here's the price tag. It says $8, but it was actually $4 for this strand. It was pretty cheap. Okay, and these are how light. They're uh, man-made um, beads. Here are some other beads I got. I'll have one more strand of rondelles. These are four millimeter rondelles in a teal color. They're so pretty. I love this color. It's my favorite color. And I also got some rounds. And I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm hunting for colors, I kind of find that peach colors are hard to find. And, I don't know, if you go to a bead store, just check out their beads and look for peach colors. It's kind of like one of the rarest colors to find. I have a hard time finding it. So anyways, I got this color, peach, and I just love it. I don't have any colors like this. It's really pretty. I don't know if it's showing up well on my camera, but it's a really nice coral uh, peach color. And, um, they're glass, and when I bought them from him... I asked him if they were like check beads and he says no they are dyed pearls but they're glass so I've seen dyed freshwater pearls but I've never seen dyed glass rounds but um yeah that's what he said and I looked at the hole and usually uh, when you buy pearls uh, glass pearls there's a coating on them and when you look at the hole you could see the coating around the hole but there is no coating there because they are dyed so um I really love these. They're really nice. And I got, and it's in a really long strand. I think it's like 16 inches. And I got this orange color here. I don't use orange very much. It's kind of a challenging color for me. And I like this shade of orange, so um, I got this one too. And I also got a red. It's really nice. Okay. And I also got some more beads, and I'm fixing to show you, uh, you them. But uh, before I do, I'm going to clear my desk off. I also got these gorgeous wavy donut beads. They are opalite gemstone and have a hole drilled here through the side and all the way out this side here. So the hole's straight through the donut like that. Now I wanted to make a necklace with them and I was thinking of different ways to use them. I decided not to use the drilled holes but the large hole here in the center. The donuts have two different sides, so one side's opalite and the other side is the uh, metallic color. 
And since they're two-sided, I decided to make my necklace reversible. So one side is all opalite, and the other side is metallic. If you are interested in these wavy donut beads, I got his business email address, and it is Golden Tiger Imports at Verizon.net. So you can contact him and get some beads. He has more colors to choose from, and I will also leave his email address in the description bar below the video. So check down there for his email address, and you can contact him and get some of these really wild and unique looking donut beads. They are so cool. And again, they are opalite. So here's the necklace that I designed with these donuts. And when I started designing with them, I was thinking of different things I could do with them. Um, I could take head pins, put them in the center of the hole, push it out that way, put one in the center here, and push it out that way. And then I would have a head pin sticking out this way and this way, and I'd put a bead on each end, uh, make a wrap loop, and I can connect uh, them together with chain. Or I could have one as a pendant, so I would, you know, like I said, have the head pins coming uh, through these holes and I would hang it this way and down here I would have like a tassel with chains and beads on it but um I don't know that was kinda simple and it was too easy I wanted something uh, more I wanted more and I like big bold pieces of jewelry so this is what I did I took uh, five donuts and I connected them this way. I was thinking of having one in the center but I decided not to do that uh, because I wanted to use more of these round rondelle beads and I had uh, different sizes of them. I had three different sizes and then the biggest one in the, in the middle here I only had one of those so it was like th it was meant to be this piece was meant to be. So um what I did is I uh, connected the donuts together with these little links, these little connection things here that I made. It took one and a half foot of thread to make these here. And I have a rondelle in the middle, and this is what it looks like from this side, how it's connected, okay? Just like that. And I came up here and I made another one. And then I made this piece in the middle, and I have a longer piece of thread here in the middle. I used two and a half feet of thread here in the middle for this rondelle strand that I did. And um, I have the rondelles going from smallest to biggest, and then back to smallest again in size. And then for the sides here, I did the double strands of seed beads again. And I did my rondelles, biggest to smallest. And then I made the rest of the necklace to match uh, the parts here. So I had double strands. So I did a double strand C bead with the rest of the necklace. And I also put an extender chain on this. And these are actually jump rings that are doubled. Um, I was going to do one row of jump rings but, um, for my extender chain. But I wanted this to be really strong. So I just doubled it. And plus I like how uh, the double... Uh, jump rings look so I think that's pretty and um this is what I did and like I said uh, these donuts are reversible so one side has the opalite and then the other side has the metallic finish so I have two different necklaces in one really and I love it it's so pretty um, I'm going to show you how I made these connectors here because even if you don't buy these um, here from that guy that I got them from you might find donuts elsewhere and if you have enough of them if you have at least five of them you can make a necklace like I did so I'm going to show you how to make the connectors here uh, so you can make a necklace just like I have here um, I do have some other donuts I have a, I think they're buried right now but um, the ones I have are smooth and I don't have a bunch of them I have like one or two of them and they're they're smooth so they're not wavy like this and the hole in the center is smaller but maybe you could do like the same thing with them and also what would look cool if you did all different kinds of donuts if you do a cool design like that with different colored donuts so anyways I'm gonna show you how to make this here it's pretty easy to do 
and um, you don't have to use your best quality seed beads. Uh, these are the seed beads I used for this project. I actually recycled them from a purse uh, at a, that I found at the thrift store. They're not all uniform, but the, their color is permanent. They do not change color. They're not coated. So uh, I use them for projects like this. They are great. So uh, don't ever get rid of your seed beads that aren't uniform because you can use them uh, in projects like this, in stringing projects. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get ready and show you how to make one of these little connection things. And the technique for making this is the same for this part and for the rest of the necklace here. You just need uh, longer amounts of thread and I'll put um, all my measurements down there in the description bar below this video. So check that out. So I just went through my beads and the two donuts that I was thinking about were these two but I also found some other ones that you could use with the same technique. Um, this one here is pretty large and this is the size that I see most of the time uh, when I see donuts. And um, this is what I was talking about. It's a very thin donut. It's smooth. Um, the ones that I have here are a lot thicker and they're wavy. But um, the holes in this is a little bit smaller but I think that it will still work uh, with the seed bead strands going through this hole. This one here is also a little smaller but I think it will work. Um, you could do the same technique with these donuts and I don't like these colors together but it would look cool if you had like one big one and two small ones and you connected them uh, like I did in my necklace and just had like three donuts maybe make a smaller necklace and here are some other ones that are really thin but you could still do the same thing with these and you would just use uh, less seed beads and this here isn't a donut this is actually a pendant uh, that I found somewhere in clearance and it has a big hole in it but this here would be awesome uh, with the same technique I'm using for that necklace I could make a bale for this out of sea beads and that would look so cool. And I could have either the sea beads coming up to the top and have a bead at the top and then my strands go separate ways. Or I could do it like this here. I would have uh, two on this side, two on this side, and I would have uh, you know, the necklace going around uh, my neck. So um, there's different ways that you can design a necklace using this technique I'm showing you and even these here these are not donuts but they have a large hole in the middle and they're flower shaped but um, they will work the same way because of the hole in the middle is large enough to fit the seed beads there so um, I just wanted to show you some different donuts that I have here that you could use um, for this uh, technique that I'm doing so uh, this is the donut collection that I have. I have my two donuts here that I'm going to connect together and the bead I'm using in the middle is an 8 millimeter bead. You can use any size you want uh, to connect your donuts together but I kind of felt like the 8 millimeter was a good size because it made my necklace more uh, proportionate with each other. That's a word I would say. Um, you're also going to need beading needles. You could use a regular beading needle. This is a size 10 beading needle. Or you could use twisted wire beading needles, whatever you want. Um, this needle here I made and I have a video on it on how to make your own twisted wire beading needles. Now these, de these needles, they don't work great for every project, but for projects like this here, they work awesomely. And they're very inexpensive, so um. If you haven't seen that video, I will leave a link down there in the description bar for it. Now, the thread I'm using is a Fireline thread, a 10-pound test. I recommend a 10-pound because the donuts are heavy, and you want something that's really strong. So the 10-pound test Fireline is really great to use for this project. Now, for demonstration purposes, I will be using um, some junky thread just for demonstration purposes because um, I will do something later on with these donuts. I'm not going to make another one of these necklaces. And you're also going to need 11 OC beads and like I said they don't have to be uniform. They can be you know crappy. They could be uh, all different shapes and stuff so that doesn't matter. And um, you're going to need a ruler to measure 
your length of sea beads. Um, when I wrapped the sea beads around this, I found that an inch and a half of sea beads is the perfect length so our donuts can spin. And there's a lot of movement, but not too much movement, so it's just right. So, um, I like the Twisted Bar beading needles because they are long, and I could pick up an inch and a half of sea beads on this needle and measure and if I have too much I can easily slide it off and with this needle it is shorter so I have to slide it down my thread and slide it back up off my needle so it's kind of annoying so um I'd rather use this one for this project but later on when I do tie my knots I would uh, rather use this needle so to pick up my sea beads I'm going to use this twisted wire beading needle and the first thing we have to do is put on our rondelle bead. Slide that down, okay? Then I'm going to pick up my seed beads. And you can pick them up off your mat or you can run your needle through your container like this and pick them up, okay? So that's probably less than an inch, I'm guessing. And I need an inch and a half of seed beads. I'm gonna keep going. Let's see. Almost there. Okay, probably need like three or four more. Let's see. Measure it. And I have an inch and a half. Actually, I have a little bit less. I need one more seed bead. Okay, so I'll just add one more. Okay, slide this down my thread. And you want to leave a little tail, like four or five inches. You don't need that much. And I'm going to take my donut, and I'm going to put my needle through my donut, just like this. Then I'm going to take my needle and pass through my donut. And I have a seed bead loop, okay? And this is what it looks like, okay? Now you got to be careful that you don't pull this thread um, through, this tail through this. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up another inch and a half of sea beads. And you can use a bead spinner for this too if you have one. I have one, but um, I'm kind of choosing not to use it today. Only because I have to use the hook needles, which are kind of irritating. Okay. So I need just a few more. little bit more, maybe like two more and I'll measure it again. There's two. Okay, now I have an inch and a half of sea beads. So I'm going to slide this down. I'm going to go through my donut and my donuts are reversible so I'm going to go through the back of my donut. Okay, and then I'm going to take my needle and go back through this rondelle. Pull my neat, pull my thread ends, and this end, the thread over here has gotten long, so I'm going to pull my working end to make that longer. Okay, so this is about how much tail I have left on this side, and this is what I have right now. I have one strand of sea beads on each side, and I'm going to do a second strand because it looks much better with more. Okay, straighten up my needle, and I'm going to pick up another inch and a half, and the phone's ringing. One second. Okay, so I'm back. Like I said, I'm going to do another inch and a half of sea beads. Pick them up. Measure this. I need probably like two more seed beads, so I'm just going to pick those up and put them on. Okay, so there's my inch and a half. Slide them down. Okay, now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go back underneath my donut, pull my seed beads through, and then I'm going to take my needle and pass through the rondelle. I'll zoom in a little bit through the rondelle just like this pull the needle through ok 
okay and pull my threads tight okay now I have one more um thing to add so I'm gonna pick up another inch and a half of sea beads here okay still need more One seed bead shy. Okay, so there's my inch and a half. Slide that down. I'm gonna go with my needle to the back of this donut and come out here. Okay, just like this. Pull this thread tight. Pull this one tight. If one of your thread seems a lot longer. I'm going to take this off my needle here. If one of your threads seems a lot longer, and let's see. Okay, this was just a little bit longer. I'm going to pull this apart, and then the thread that's shorter, I'm going to pull that more through the um, rondelle or C bead. Okay, and now they're closer in length. Okay, so that's good. So now we'll have enough thread to tie knots. So this is what's going on right now. This thread is exiting out of the roundel, and this one's exiting out of C beads. I'm going to try to tie a knot right here. So I'm just going to go over and under, and I'm not going to pull this down all the way, because the C beads are going to jump into my knot if I'm not careful. Careful. Okay, so there's one knot, and now I'm going to tie another one, again, over and under, just like this. So here you can see I have one knot, two knots. I'm slowly going to bring this down my thread, okay, both knots, slowly down, it's kind of a little tricky to do, my seed beads are already jumping into my knot, let me fix this, okay, make sure that your thread is tight, okay, pull the first knot straight down, make sure it's tight, and then when you feel that your all your thread is tight in this, go ahead and pull your second knot down and pull it very tight, okay? So now they are connected and we have one knot that is securing it. And I'm going to go ahead and tie a surgeon's knot. So over and under once and then over and under twice and bring that down just like that. Now I'm going to put my threads together, if one is longer, and I can't believe they are so close in length. I'm going to take the longer one, and I'm going to put my needle on my thread. And I think I'm going to use my other needle for this. And these um these needles that I made they have a collapsible eye so your thread doesn't fall out as much so you have to use them you have to reopen the eye with something and then you could stick your thread through it okay then once you put a bead through it or pull a bead down it collapses the eye okay so I have that done I'm going to turn this and I'm going to take my needle and if you have to you pull your knot down I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go through this rondelle okay I'm going to come out the rondelle like this doesn't matter where I'm going to pull my thread through And right there is my knot. I'm going to pull my thread and my knot pops right inside of my rondeau. So now what I'm going to do is tie another knot here. So straighten out my needle. I'm going to take my needle. I'm going to go under one of these strands of sea beads. Just like this. Make a loop and go through it twice. Okay. Bring this loop down. Because I need it to fall where my thread is exiting, which is at the base of the rondelle, not my first C bead. My 
threads are getting wrapped together. Right there is where I need it to go, and I'm going to pull my knot down slowly, and right there where it falls, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do, and I'm not going to show you because I already showed how to tie uh, the knots, is I'm going to go to my other needle because this one is a little hard to pass through the seed beads and tie knots. I'm going to go through my other needle, I'm going to pass through two seed beads, and I'll tie another half inch knot, and I'll repeat that. I'll go through a few seed beads, tie half inch knots, and I'll go just tie like maybe four or five knots down the side of this strand of seed beads and then I'll cut my thread and then once I'm done there I'll go to this thread and I'll go through the seed beads on this side and tie my half hitch knots inside of these seed beads and then I'll cut my thread and then I have this section done and then the next thing to do is to make more of these and connect um, my donuts together so if I'm like right here in this part I would have to make another one of these and connect a third donut so um it's pretty easy it's simple to do and like I said you can make different looking designs but using this same technique with beads that are like these with the big holes so um I hope this was very helpful to you this video and I hope I gave you a lot of different ideas on things you could do and different ways that you could de design necklaces with uh, donut beads. This is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos, and like me on Facebook. And don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry you've made from my videos on my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching.